lights out. Don't let it fade. Right, so. <clears throat> project! Yeah, project. So we can hear it. If you can't hear it, so it's like now putting it in the speaker like that. It's very bad. Right. So. <clears throat> Hello there guys, and welcome back to Cerberus Gamer's Rug Trader session. We are now up to our fourth recording session, I believe, and hopefully you've all been enjoying this. Um, you may notice we haven't been facing our group tonight. Um, so, <laughs> I suggest we uh, introduce ourselves once again. I am Richard, the Game Master. Start at that end, please. I am Carl Bond, I play Luther. I am Ryan, I'm going to emphasize on my name now, and I play Gromlick. <laughs> and uh, my name's Cena, and I play Lariel. I'm free. <laughs> and we will be getting to her character in a little while. Before we continue, though, we'd just like to clarify that this is a fictional role playing game. Gromlik, Luther, and Ilariel are our fictional names. The only reason I say this is because we've recently had. A viewer message Ryan here asking why he's such a dick as Gromlik to Christina, oh, yeah. which is me. I mustn't be emphasizing what my name is because the person referred to me as Gromlik, as if that was my real name. Which would take some impressively cruel parents. So they thought uh, Ryan was called Gromlik and he was deliberately being an was... asshole to me for the sake of it, yes. not because I mean, it's part of the act. So um, please don't be stupid. We will be doing backstory videos of our characters so you'll understand why Gromlik is what um, he is. Ha the, the mascot of the ship. The mascot just appears out. <laughs> oh, he does that. Why do you think I did? I can't remember what stat line I gave him. So, yeah. 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 Go on Facebook, he has his own stats. Yeah, there we go. Also, again, shout out to Rufus Toothless who made our glorious shirt. I believe even Faye here has one as well. Oh, purple. Um, yeah, just go over, take a look. We'll leave a link in the bottom there, guys. Just yeah, have a look. Happy days. Anyway. So, as you may recall, last time you found yourselves in the Verino system, uh, hunting after the uh, Glory of Chiron, the ship that formerly belonged to your boss's brother, but appears to have been abducted by somebody who pretended to be him. Um, you've learned that it destroyed an Imperial ship called the Swift Point. And stole some sort of mysterious artifact from it. Uh, you also rescued an unconscious sister of battle who appeared to be the only survivor of the Swift Queen. Um, she's currently unconscious in the May Um So, we pick up a few days later. Um, from, given that you currently have no new information to go from, uh, Amber has decided that the best thing you can do for the moment is to loiter exactly where you are. And scan the debris field that you were investigating before to see if you can find anything worth um, returning to Imperial service. Um, so there's currently several salvage teams deployed to various Imperial wrecks, uh, recovering ammunition, uh, small arms, looking for anything that might be worth recovering. It's not stealing, it's definitely recovering, it's legitimate salvage. Can I roll a dice to see if there's anything that I could use? Sure. Yeah. Do you have anything in particular in mind? Just so? Weapons or anything to, to, I don't know, something that will help my character? Sure. Yeah, you can look for anything particularly interesting in that regard. Well, um, something I can barter with um, with my little birds that give me information. Mm -hmm. Little birds. Game of Thrones references for right now. Yeah, I'm going to be the, the 40k um, version of Varys, except better looking. I've got hair. And, and with, you know, and with all my genitalia, genitalia yeah. from like, it's yeah. still there. Okay, as long as we get to that. So, yeah, <laughs> um, what we're doing early? I'm going to call this a variation on an acquisition test, so I'm just going to make the number up off the top of my head. Make it a 35 or something, please. 35. Nice. Nice, you don't. So, just uh, succeeded. After a little while, you find a cache of standard imperial currency. Um, it's not enough to be you know, worth you know, uh, Amberly's interest, because again, she's a good piece of information. 
but small cash is always very useful for a spy master for any kind of small bribes or anything like that that you don't want to be in trouble. Uh, so for the next few times you'll try to read all information out of someone and we'll give you a plus 10 bonus on it because you've got yeah. good, good oh, bribe. Are you going to keep an eye on that bonus right now? Uh, I'll, I'll can I search for armor? Uh, sure. You know you've got pretty good armor, right? Do you know? No, I don't. I mean, it's, it's fine. Everyone well, else has like, better armor than me. Well, yeah, that's just because they rolled stupidly well. We got the same like, left like, hand. Can, can I look? Am I I'm like still? Yeah, you're currently on the bridge. You're know, doing your job, running the senses. You're doing your job, whereas we're not. All right. Can okay. I look for weapons and armor? Yeah. What do they need? Um. Given that you're looking for anything better than what you've currently got, uh, I'm going to say if you get 25 or below, you're going to get something really interesting. Uh, if you get 45 or below, you'll get something less interesting. Okay. Now, two, three fate points. I will fate point that. What did you get? That was 71. <laughs> well, Straight off the back, I think. I mean, it's nice that he remembers he has fate points, though I do feel he kind of wastes them. <laughs> no! 79! That's even worse. Cool, and you can't use a fate point on the same dice roll. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, your salvage teams aren't, available, aren't able to find anything worth stealing out there. They recover a fair few, some of the small arms, some of the items, last pistols, that kind of stuff, but nothing that's better than what they are in now. It, it's a nice. Yeah, sure. Oh, the car's got me one dead. Cool. The China got me one dead. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a nice supplement to. You know, it's a nice supplement to what is already on board the ship. But it's nothing new or interesting. Yeah, in that case, I'm going to return to my quarters and start drinking. Wait, <laughs> right. thank you already. Um, as you are heading out the door, um, Amelie's box console uh, lights up. She yeah. listens to uh, a message in her earbud for a moment, and then stands up. Gromlik, you're coming with me. Luther, Hilaria, and you too. Ooh, where are we going? Oh, God. A mid -day. Just a sister's woken up. About that. I have sister. something interesting to say. You go make the best behaviour. I was just about to my ear. I don't like it under my ear. Yes, oh. well, Gromlik, you can have some in a minute. Because you, you owe me beer. I do she, owe she, you beer. Uh, as you walk, Amberly just pulls out a hip flask and hands it to you. Hey! <laughs> Boy, that what? what? I wouldn't have recommended that, Captain. Oh, it's fine. It's not the strong still. <laughs> I, I make no comment. <laughs> yeah, this is how. This is you know one of the reasons that uh, he's quite loyal to Abilene. She doesn't oppose his drinking habit as long as it doesn't get in the way of his work. He's a functioning alcoholic. She can live with that. You know, because the functioning part—that's the important. Thing. Yeah, you go. Um, you head down to uh, the med bay, which is actually not that far from the bridge, relatively speaking. Um, Imperial ship designers probably did this because, well, quite That's frankly. Coming with us. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. It's on a baby trousers in the way. Um, yeah, Imperial ship designers probably designed things this way because, well, Imperial ship captains have an annoying habit of getting shot by their own crews and it helps to have medical protection on standby. So, um, once you reach uh, the med bay, um, Tabitha sort of uh, gestures over to you. Well, she's alive. She even seems to be in reasonable shape. Mostly in the bad concussion. Not to mention low low oxygen levels. I can't believe you idiots moved her without sending for me first. Well, <laughs> yeah. come on, come on. Okay. <laughs> come on. <laughs> we can't He's very curious today. Come here. Come on, little ones. Hey, normally he's just lazy. Well, he just slept last time. It's just too much to sleep. Come here. Probably because we're recording this a little earlier than usual, so he's not as dozy. No. Yeah, that's good. He's going to lie there. There we go. <laughs> Should we? <laughs> so, um, she, you know, after berating you for a while, uh, Tapitha eventually leads you over to a, um, you know, a standard Imperial med bed, uh, with a medical servitor stood next to it, sort of administering various, um, you know, you know, you know, you know uh, administering you know, various uh, drugs and, and you know, nutritional supplements, all that, all that kind of stuff that you need to to that cat's back and take it to the program. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know you like it. I know you like it. Same call them cat kids. We'll probably have to put the team to bed. 
I love that, an open plan uh, flat. Seems according to Dave, it's going to turn up again. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, lying in the uh, bed is a sister of battle. Who's now stroking the cat? Who is now stroking the cat, yeah. Uh, the cat hops up onto uh, the sister of battle bed and uh, sort of you know, stares at her for a bit. And uh, doesn't detect any weird psychic nonsense going on about her. And then hops off again. Because that's one of the things the cat can do. <laughs> Seriously, I, I like, I like, I like it. It rolled a critical success as well. I like how you like trying to evolve the cat in the story. I'm, I'm trying to I'm, put it this way. I'm still going to spare Greg's model, but I'm going to paint to be roughly you know, his colours. Nice. Um, but I haven't got around to doing it yet. <laughs> no, it's funny. I just like the idea. It's just like the cat's just jumped on the table and it's just came off. And it just is <laughs> <serious>. <laughs> Like out of improvisation on the story It's like in the middle of the battle we're just gonna have this like moment. I'm half expecting the yeah, I'm half expecting the cat to walk across the board and be like well half the enemy army just died. Um, <laughs> the cat right um, across the street. Everyone said that it's D10 damage. So, uh yes. You are lying in the uh, bed, semi-conscious. Uh, you awake to find a group of strange people you do not recognise standing around you. Actually happening at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we did have to drug her and kidnap her to make her turn up. So, you know. <laughs> we didn't. Yeah. We did. Yeah. I, I, I said it and I was like, I probably should clarify that it's a joke. It's <laughs> a joke for those of you who don't know what those are. We don't know the difference between reality and fiction. Um, so, yes. Um, what would you like to say to these mysterious people surrounding you? Mind you, we are very, like, looming over you right <laughs> Oh, I'll throw it him who sees peeking up on the side of the bed. <laughs> hey, I'm fine, see it, hey. Did you see these little eyes? Hey, I want to see it. Hey, his head's up down. Hey, look at him. Where's we step? Get, get! Hey, so, come back, pack it in, she's just woken up. Hey, I need my step, I want to see it properly. Go get your step then. He goes oh, up, he wanders up to find a box. <laughs> Sit with his hip black on his arm. Back on his head. Yeah, so uh, the, what is quite clearly the leader of because she's dressed most spectacularly and you know, has actual you know, leadership bearing, unlike these morons, um, sort of, uh, you know, sort of uh, looks down at you and sort of smiles reasonably kindly. Battle sister, what is your name? Project. Project. You might want to towards the camera. Valerie. Valerie? Yeah. Yeah. Very well, sister Valerie. We rescued you from the remains of your ship. My name is Amberly. I am a rogue trader of the House Rathbone. I'm afraid there were no other survivors from your ship. Oh, that's an interesting response. <laughs> <laughs> I think she might still be in shock. Um, can I come back with my box? Yes, you can come back with your box. <laughs> hey, what's your name? It's Valerie. <laughs> calm, what? calm down. Valerie, she's awkward. Hey, we've been through this comic. What do you mean we've been through Her name is Valerie. Okay. Okay. I'm Robert, please to meet your acquaintance, Adam. He's the raging alcoholic that you don't need to know. <laughs> what? What are you calling me? My parents were married. I don't know. Children, please. Hey, we're all. I'm running empty here. They were also your sisters and brothers. I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> what, you go? You really want to around like that? Not right now, Dominic. Maybe later, when you're trying to aim your stupid gun at the enemy and failing. Do you ever see me shooting a weapon? No. This is true, can't. he mostly swings an axe and misses. Yeah. So, um, and then we sort of vaguely gesticulating to try and make the idiots be quiet. Um, yeah, sort of says. Sister, we were hunting the vessel that attacked you. We understand that it stole some form of artifact from your ship. Do you have any knowledge of what this artifact was? Yeah, we, we <laughs> yeah. 
Here's the thing. Most of, most of the comedy from this basic is I write a dead serious plot, and then I let these idiots loose on it. He fucked it up. Yeah, yeah. So you've seen Bromwick. You've watched the videos. To be fair, when we first started, I wasn't expecting uh, a squat. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly why I didn't tell any of you that there was a squat coming. <laughs> because I wanted to play it all. But you wouldn't let me. I know there was someone comment, I think somebody commented saying, about oh, your orc voice actually. <laughs> oh, right. I was gonna say, I promise at some point I will let you guys do an orc one shot where you can all be different varieties of orc. It's a treat for these guys, basically. Hey, what? Gotta be back But again, that's, <laughs> that's a ways away. Let's, let's not worry about this for the time being. Back to the artifact. Back, back to things that are actually going on. I can just stop timer to remind me of this. That's okay. Five, five that's fine. No, that's not the right timer because uh, it's not bloopers. So we've got another like 15 minutes. Because yes, we put it on to record some bloopers. Yeah, all the videos we said before, behind the scenes. And most of it's completely unbroadcastable. Um, <laughs> but thankfully, this is YouTube, okay. not you know, TV, so we can say what we like. Fuck within, you. Within you reason. Like that was yeah, yeah, please don't tell off viewers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's 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 rather just after this. Uh, I'd block it. It's a retard. Oh. <laughs> Anywho, yes, I'm that douchebag. Don't mind me. So, um, you know, Tabitha, you know, has basically declared, uh, you know, uh, Valerie here basically healthy. Um, you know, she, she's covered in some of your minor bumps and bruises and, and that kind of stuff, but uh, nothing too major. Um, would you like me to explain your backstory? Is it just a little nervous and candid? <laughs> ah, that's fine. Um, basically, um, the Battle Sister explains that she was assigned to the Swift Wing as part of the squad to help recover these mysterious artifacts. Um, her team was able to locate the first artifact on a planet a couple of systems away from here. And they um, went down, they dug it out, they returned it to the ship. And all was going fine and dandy until the ship came under attack on the return trip home. And she and her squad were basically sent down to uh, the chapel to defend it and defend the artifact. Um, when the ship very nearly got blown in half, uh, they all kind of flung around, but they all managed to survive it and get you know, combat ready again. And the last thing she remembers is somebody boarding the ship, opening the door, and some sort of massive explosion and she was kind of flung back and smashed against something and that's the last thing she remembers. Oh, so she doesn't know who invaded the ship, um, only that whoever they were, they clearly had fairly impressive firepower given that you know, she and her sisters were in full you know, blessed power on her. Do you remember any details about the intruder when they opened the door or was it like a silhouette? It, it was literally door opened wide enough to throw a bomb oh, out. Okay. Well that's not helpful. Yeah. Whoever it was clearly has no of proper door breaching tactics in the game. They didn't just open the door and try to walk in, they open a little bit, throw a bomb in, close it, bang. So they've got enough the knowledge in. about um, yeah, Imperial they, they, ships and things like that. Then. Yeah. So they clearly they, weren't you know, ravening insane orcs or something like that because this was a tactical move. They've got was, a rogue soldier on the loose. Well, let's face it, if, they, you know, if the team did indeed come from the glory of Chiron, then they would be, you know, Solomon's men, and they are reasonably well trained. And then they would have been convinced that this was like someone that obviously. They, they were probably told it was a party of traitors or something like that. But okay. again, again, the thing about Imperial propaganda is they're so paranoid about the other presence of heretics and things like that that it's actually not that difficult to make them murder each other. Oh, okay. It's not hard to convince them that like someone's betraying them, even though they could be the, tra the traitors themselves. And, uh, which uh, which is uh, quite funny because in the end they'll end up like when they realize they betrayed they're like well we can't go back to the Imperium because we'll just be oh, so we will be either executed or turned into servitors so we might as well just remain as traitors. That's happened a few times. I can't remember which there's one Space Marine chapter in particular that 
basically thought everything they were doing was authorised by an Inquisitor. And what they didn't know is the Inquisitor had been kicked out of the order for being a nutter. Um, so they basically did a load of really awful stuff and got punished for it. And, and this happened, and, uh, yeah, they, they basically went, well, bollocks to this. Yeah. Which is why I'm using. So what's the next step from here, then? We've not been able to get any information from Valerie. There's no clues, there's nothing in the salvage teams of any teams, no clues, where are we going? Well, as you stand around discussing what your next possible move should be, um, you hear a clunk, clunk, clunk of a um, staff, you know, tapping the deck plates as somebody walks in. Ah, oh, shitty pants, that's who it um, is. And uh, your senior astropath, Ravain, walks in. Uh, he looks around the room, again, using the phrase looks never feels entirely accurate given that he is Extremely blind. Oh, I didn't even do it. Wait, I've got um, Pierre yes, Astro Pass. Yes, you get on with the role of Ravain. Yes. Despite the fact that Ravain is a dickhead. That's fine. We, we are yeah, matching souls. <laughs> um, well, your Pierre Astro Pass just gives you a general bonus to dealing with all Astro Pass. Um, right, but if he's unwilling to tell me, he's not yeah, yeah, you, out yeah, you get a bonus to, to get it out of him. Um, so he uh, you know, clocks in. And uh, you know, sort of, you know, glances around and then walks straight over to you. Yeah, I do a paranoid check. What's his name again? The last time he came in, something came out of nowhere. Yeah, sure. Perception check. What was that? Sixty-nine. Or or or. No, you don't. You don't see anything especially out of the ordinary. There's a lot of beefy machinery you don't recognise, but other than that, uh, should I do one? I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll say, oh, hi, Gravain. How, how, how can we be of assistance? And then I'll analyze him. I need a 36. 28. Cool. Um, but something's clearly aggravating Gravain. He's, he's clearly more annoyed than he usually is, and that's kind of saying something. What's wrong, Gravain? Why? There is something in this system. He looks over at uh, Amwick. My lady, I felt a call, psychic. Like it is weak, and yet the mind was so focused, trained, I'm certain, exceptionally well. I request the use of a vessel to find it. Is that wise? Were you wanting to go alone? I wouldn't go find it. Can we use the cat to use this for something? Sure. <laughs> cat's here, might as well use it. Well, the, 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 the cat's not sensitive enough to detect whatever this is. Oh. Um, Gravain uh, sort of looks at you. I would be willing to accept your company, and I could do with a potential escort should this turn out to be some sort of a dangerous situation. However, I fully appreciate that taking the entire ship is not probable at the moment. Given our current trouble. engagement, I appreciate it will take a long time to recover all our salvage teams. I suggest we take that, that Aquila of yours and that idiot pirate. Well, then I believe you have no objection. I'm more than happy to accompany Gravain to find out what this disturbance is. We, we're Very talking bad. about Theodore, by the way. Mm. No. Well, you said an idiot pilot. We're talking about you, Gromlik. No, no, like, I'm a fucking no, pilot. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, I, I like heard, Theodore. I just heard the word idiot and assumed it was you. Yeah, yeah. I've been a fucking dick. Yeah. yeah. Heard that. Very well. You want that free beer? Very yeah. well. I'll go back down and start chucking my axe and I fucking scrap metal like shit. You three, go with him. She uh, looks over at you. Battle sister, if you are willing, they would also appreciate your company, I'm sure. After all, keeping an eye on psychers is traditionally part of your responsibility. Yes, traditionally. And very good. We'd appreciate your expertise in battle as well. Yeah. Yep. It's almost like I'm trying to keep the whole party together or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. Yeah, 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 yeah. We could do that, we could miss it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Got that. Hey, empty! I'm running empty here! Yeah. She pulls a second hit flask out from her. Hey, 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 huh? <laughs> so, uh, come then. There is no time to lose. Ravain starts marching off towards the uh, shuttle bay, and he's moving with a fair clip, actually. Um, as I've ever seen you move, Ravain. You tried having a constant needle right 
presence inside your mind is. What's it doing? I do. Every morning I wake up, I have it. Like, Shh, what's wrong with you? Hey, yeah. you. I'm talking to you. You may be trying to talk to the Luffy here. My good man here. <laughs> this presence in your mind, what's it doing? It is clearly a cause of distress. What can I add to this? I'm trying to explain this. Give us a spotlight for a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Just... Trying to explain this to a person without the gift is difficult, but imagine a constant, gnawing scream in the back of your mind calling out for you. And yet it is far more sensitive than that. It a single needle thrust straight through into your mind. It is. It sounds like he shakes his head. He's clearly in a not inconsiderable amount of pain. It sounds well, like a calculation that you cannot solve. Perhaps. Well, let's be off quickly then, so we can find what this is, uh, where this trouble is coming from. And we'll ease your pain. Cool. Hey, so I'm you stop as well while walking to hey. a shuttle bay. Oh, God, hey. Breaking he's he's learned a new trick while drinking. Hey, yeah. It's called drink, drink water. It's called sleep, drink, drive. <laughs> hey. Where he sleeps, drinks, and his whole body just moves on its own. Oh, hey. hey. <laughs> Stay awake, Grumbeck. We're going now. Well, you're talking at all. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what's going on with cybernetic. I know he's got eyes, what's he called? Uh, uh, oh yeah, he's got the, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's got the cybernetic legs and you've got the cybernetic arm. He has a lot of cybernetics on this room. Well, considering that this is... This <laughs> yeah, is well. Considering this <laughs> is the <laughs> dark <laughs> drug. Yes, I'm happy to do any rules on the drink. Well, considering that this yeah, is the dark grim, uh, dark grim future where technology and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're gonna need as jazz. much. You're gonna need as much cybernetics as you can oh, yeah. get. That really is the mechanics attitude in a nutshell. So congratulations on that. Well, kind of when can I start with Chris? Kitty. Kitty. Can you do? Uh, when you have a reasonable opportunity. Okay. Can we get him to do another scan now. He's coming to join. He's coming he's, with he's, us. Oh, are you? Yeah. Yeah, the cat's coming with us. Come, Chief. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Just wondering, it's next level when we get to. Yeah, you can hit rank two after today's session. So I'll say I want to have a conversation with you about that later. Okay. So, um, yes, you hurry down to uh, the shuttle bay to find that uh, you know there's various heavy lift shuttles coming in and out, um, returning with uh, salvage from the various uh, ships you've been. Um, yeah, let's just say looting and be honest about it. Um, however, the uh, Personal Aquila of uh, Amelie or her chosen you know, group uh, is currently sitting on the fly bay. Um, Theodore sort of sat next to it with his feet up. It's clear he's had the message to uh, be waiting here for you, but his quarters are literally right above the flight bay, so he can get here very, very quickly if he needs to. Good to see you again, Theodore. Likewise, my lady. Gravain. He, he sort of scowls at uh, the astrobat. Yeah, you know him as well. Come on, he's not that bad. He's going to bother talking with a help, my lady. He says to you as he walks past uh, Theodore. Yeah, Theodore, me and you both don't have that no more. Just slap him, that's not very nicely. <sighs> Honestly, that sounds very appealing to hey. me, my friend. I've got a big class to the hill for you. So, well, that's not going to happen anytime soon, so let's be off, shall we? Any yeah. idea where the hell we're going? No, we're following Gravain on this one. He's picked up a signal of some kind. It seems to be causing a lot of pain. Oh, Sounds like good. a cry for help. Uh, Theodore uh, gets on board uh, the ship and uh, the passenger compartment is available for all of you. Again, Imperial Aquilas are reasonably sized uh, shuttles and they're often used for, you know, VIP transport and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's quite a comfortable ship to be travelling in while also being just well enough armoured and arms to be able to put up a fight in case there is a scrap. So it's a limousine with miniguns and whatever. <laughs> Think a limousine if Q made it. So looks mostly just for show, but actually is bulletproof and, and you know, has secret guns and stuff. Um, you know, they, they are very often used by you know, Imperial Cardinals, religious traders, and all the dignitaries, all this kind of jazz. Um, they're pricey, but they usually consider 
So, um, we're about the 13 minute mark on the timer. Yeah, 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 we'll, 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 we'll save it all for it. Yeah, yeah, cool. There's another five minutes right there, I think. Well, the cat's ready for takeoff. <laughs> the cat yeah. just like yeah. slips yeah. up the ship. So, um, the Aquila departs from the landing bay, and you immediately find yourself uh, flying through space. Um, Theodore has had the good sense to um, transmit down the image from the ship's forward horseback array uh, directly into cabin so you can see what's going on. Um, Gravain sort of, in a normal human being you would say they close their eyes. Uh, Gravain can't do that because again, no eyes anymore. Um, which most of the time he does keep hitting with a, um, a sack of uh, white material over this area. So just basically a blind. But yeah, he doesn't, you know, has no eyes and doesn't really need them anyway these days. Um, and he gets almost a, a far off dreamy look for a moment before, um, let's see. Yowza. Oh, does he straight oh, up pass out? Uh, seven is what he was on that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Sort of. I was going to say, in chat. <laughs> sure. I was so gonna Romlik say. has a nap. Um, I was going to say, did he just straight up pass out? No, thankfully he rolled a seven. You know, so he, he passed that side of his test. Well. Um, he you know, presses the comm control on, uh, you know, you've all got a little panel on your uh, seats with you know, comm controls and that kind of stuff. He presses the button, pilot, uh, divert course 45.36 degrees to port, up 43 degrees. Yep. You, you, Theodore sort of uh, clearly isn't happy about obeying orders that are, you know, he doesn't like being referred to as pilot. You, know, you can call him Theodore, you can call him Cobra, which nobody does, despite the fact it's the call sign he prefers to use. Um, but yes, he does not like being referred to as pilot, so he basically waits for a good solid 30 seconds before actually obeying the instruction. I, uh, is it, um, is able, can I go into the cockpit? You can do, you can sort of stand up and, and maneuver through it and talk. It is designed for up to two people. Right, I was just thinking of just sitting like behind him. Like, yeah, stand, like you... staying behind him, like looking out as he looks out. Yeah. Like as he's flying the ship. I just, yeah. I I just stand wanted, with him. If you wanted, you could take a co pilot seat because that does operate things like uh, weapon systems and primary scanners. Because they can all be run from a single yeah, control I'll, station. I'll do that then. I'll just sit with the. Uh... Cool. Uh, you are Master of all spec, so he has absolutely no problem with that. Uh, as you do, he sort of uh, you know, nods at you and uh, you know, greets you and says, Later. Do not worry, I am not planning on taking over. I just want to make sure that you are okay with this situation at the moment. Yes, well, anything, anytime I have to deal with that pompous asshole, he's a pain in the neck. But hey, well, I know you he's not the one paying like the bill, so I don't have to be polite to him. Well, I know you don't like I... him, Theodore, but we are on a mission at the end Yeah, but you can't have a nap yet. I'm going to search your bank will be enough. Thank you. So, Romlick has turned his comms off. Uh, you're just busy watching this and just kind of sighing at the complete random. You're probably watching all this and just contemplating. Perhaps I should have just guys, stayed on yeah. that shirt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, very much, Again. Then drill starts for all from the Yeah, I'm going to have to get that later. Um, um, can I can I activate like scanners while I'm there? Just saying. Yep. Roll me a uh, perception test. Uh, the equivalent is only got a detection of five, so plus five to your normal perception. Okay. That is uh, uh, not good. That is sixty. Okay. Um, you scan around, but there's you know, again there's a lot of interference in this uh, area, and you're unable to detect anything. Can I get the cat involved again? No. And I'd be like, hey, Crunchies, I see you on board. The, the cat has any, done enough. Any scans? The cat has done enough. Have you not like The cat comes in, you feed the cat, the cat fucks off. It's the mechanical. Cat, the cat's having a, having a uh, mechanical snooze. No, he's, no, he's looking at the camera, he's, he's awake. <laughs> looking through the window of the ship. <laughs> I just want the idea of like you editing like laser eyes. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know how you can see that? Yes. Wait, the I, have, I, have a I, expect to say Z, I would like to remind you that the cat sucks in combat. That's fine, this is it's, why he's scanning ahead now. Its weapons do have the primitive it's quality. Our body armor counts to double against them. Oh, look, you've upset him now. What have you done? <laughs> is, that, is that cocky, Richard? That's fair. 
Um, so. He's my uh, asshole. I mean, this is what Cap. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Watching recordings of, of um, things with cats in, this is just what cats do. They, they like showing their asses to the internet. Yep. I mean, this reminds me just like that moment where, you know, like the, the triggered moment where it's like the eyes are glowing bright red and the screen shakes. It's not like the word <laughs> triggered. I mean, just imagine like you just editing, like a zoom in camera on its face with just glowing eyes and just shaking violently. <laughs> and it's like gloom and music. No, oh, dear. I might do that. You know. <laughs> well, with that, with that hilarious image, that's honestly a reasonable point when this first comes. So, yeah. thank you very much for watching. See you in the next. Bye. 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 <laughs> I could have talked.